My name is Dina Nastas. I'm also known as Bam Bam. Among many things, I'm also a filmmaker and a caregiver to my mother, my beautiful mother, Maria Anagnostopoulos. My mother was diagnosed with glioblastoma on October 2015. These past seven months have been the most challenging time in our lives. It inspired me to use my filmmaking skills to bring awareness to this horrible disease. I was surprised as to how little there was out there and how little funding this particular branch of cancer gets. The death process is absolutely brutal for the patient and for the family. The mortality rate for brain cancer has essentially remained the same since Richard Nixon signed the National Cancer Act of 1971. There are very few drugs out there that are designed to fight it, and the best that those drugs can do is increase survival in terms of only months. The two films related to cancer that I produced prior to this were For They Will Know and The Assignment. They were geared towards caregivers. The goal in those films were to bring the light to the awful experience that cancer brings and what we as caregivers go through as we serve as a beacon of light for our loved one as they make their final exit from this world. The films have inspired thousands of people from around the world to send me pictures of their battles with cancer. And in this film, Awareness, you will get to see a moment of time in their difficult journey as they battle or have battled the horrors of cancer. Awareness, knowledge or perception of a situation or fact. Don't know anything about cancer? Good. Don't know anything about brain cancer? Even better. It means you walk blissfully ignorant of the true ravages of it because you haven't been touched by it. I envy you. However, that doesn't mean you won't be touched by cancer. You're not safe. Odds are that you will be. Maybe you, your wife, your husband, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your neighbor, your friend, or the worst possible scenario, your child. No one is safe. Scared of terrorists more than cancer? You, my friend, have your fears misplaced. Awareness, knowledge or perception of a situation or fact. You're either bad at math or have been thoroughly brainwashed. It's okay to be bad at math. There are many successful people that are bad at math. Their talents lie elsewhere. However, it's not okay if you've been brainwashed. Everyone agrees that September 11th was horrible. It was a very tragic day. 3,000 people were killed that day. However, it is a relatively rare event. Glioblastoma, a form of brain cancer, is the equivalent of four September 11 attacks every single year since September 11th. That's one September 11th attack every three months. Cancer in general is the equivalent of 167 September 11 attacks every year. That's roughly a September 11 attack every other day. Did you know that? Maybe. Do most of you know that? I would bet against it. Unfortunately, the root cause of this ignorance, your ignorance, is originated from the government and media. Let's talk numbers. One in two males and one in three females will get cancer in their lives. Do you know more than two males? Do you know more than three females? If you do, then chances are pretty good that someone you know will get cancer. Let me visualize this for you a little better. Even if you're bad at math, you'll get it. Take every male you know, flip a coin for them. Heads, they don't get cancer. Tails, they get cancer. Get the picture? Now every third person you flip for that got cancer will die in agonizing death from it. Those that do survive will suffer mentally and will be spooked the rest of their lives, afraid it will come back. Hello, my name is Anthony Keechman. I was diagnosed with glioblastoma March 24th, 2009, and I am still fighting the battle every day. Hey everybody, my name is Chikari. 
I've been living with glioblastoma for three years and three months. It's unbelievable, but I can be, it can't be done. Hi, my name is Rich Kovacs from Allentown, Pennsylvania. I was diagnosed with glioblastoma three years ago in one month, then back to work 10 months after, working 10, 11 hour days, feeling good. Because it could. You see, cancer is one of those things that don't really go away. They go into what's called remission. Imagine it like a ceasefire. The guns are still there along with the bullets, but for the moment, the finger's off the trigger. For the moment. I use the term ceasefire because you more than likely know what that means. With the constant media bombardment of war all around the world, scaring you into submission, making you focus on the wrong things, it's tragic because you have no idea, blissfully ignorant of the real truth, blissfully ignorant of the real statistics. Awareness, knowledge or perception of a situation or fact. Let's talk some more numbers. The odds of getting killed in an airplane by terrorists is 1 in 25 million. The odds of getting killed in the United States by terrorists is 1 in 20 million. The odds of getting killed by a terrorist worldwide is 1 in 9 million. Still scared of terrorism to the degree that you should be? If you are, then how much more should you be scared of these other things? Take the fear you have for terrorism and now proportionally grow that fear linearly to these other tragic ends. The odds of dying from food poisoning? 1 in 3 million. The odds of fatally slipping in the shower? 1 in 800,000. Dog bite? 1 in 800,000. Drowning in a bathtub? 1 in 685,000. Choking on food? 1 in 370,000. Dying from a force of nature? 1 in 225,000. Dying in a car accident? 1 in 18,000. Dying from cancer, one in six. Am I being crystal clear yet? If the media would give linearly proportional media coverage as it does for terrorism, for the deaths that would happen in our bathrooms, we would never step, step again in the bathroom out of fear. Irrational, unsubstantiated fear. You walk around your apartment, smelly, dirty, and feeling safe so long as you don't enter that dreaded bathroom, that evil bathroom, that bathroom of death and terror, only those that have a death wish would go to the bathroom. See how silly that is? The real fear, the real substantiated fear, the real fear by statistics is cancer. One in six. Some statistics report one in four, but I like being conservative as I'm an optimist. Let's go with one in six. One in six is still common, very common, to the point that it's inescapable. Awareness, knowledge or perception of situation or fact. Stand in a crowded room, a crowded bar, a crowded theater, and think to yourself, every sixth person here will die an agonizing death. Depressing, isn't it? I know, but the truth isn't always roses and candy. Sorry, I didn't write the rules. These are the facts. The hard, cold, ugly facts. So like I said, you'll be affected by cancer one way or another, unless you're a hermit living in the woods away from the world. Maybe you'll escape the grips of cancer. Maybe, but it's still one in six. One in six hermits will still die from cancer. Why am I spitting these statistics at you? Well, one is to show you that you're scared of the wrong things. Your degree of fear is mismatched with reality. The mismatched fear trickles into what gets funded at a government level. You see, the media exaggerates fear in order to get your support on things they get bought to support. And government barks at you how afraid you should be of the latest propaganda they're selling. It's capitalism at its finest. For every terrorist victim, the government spends $500 million. And for every cancer victim, they spend $10,000. Does that make any sense to you? This government is your government. Yours. Let me read the first passage of the U.S. Constitution. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our prosperity. Do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. It starts with we, the people. This government was established for us by us. Then how is it that the bulk of money that we contribute in taxes goes against an enemy that affects us in a minuscule way relatively to a real enemy that is almost assured of affecting us and all our loved ones? I'm talking about your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your son, your daughter, your friends and neighbors. One of these are almost guaranteed to get cancer in their lifetime, in your lifetime, yet you're not afraid to the degree that you should be, the way you're afraid of terrorism. If you want to be afraid of a terrorist, a true terrorist, that terrorist is cancer. 
Awareness, knowledge or perception of the situation or fact. One in two males, one in three females. One in six will die, conservatively speaking. One in six. Not one presidential candidate speaks about this. Not one. Almost, if it's a non-issue. A non-issue. One in two males, one in three females. One in six will die. One in six, a non-issue. A hundred billion is spent on terrorism and five billion is spent on cancer research. Average U.S. deaths per year due to terrorism, 225. Average U.S. deaths per year due to cancer, 500,000. Your fears are misplaced. Demand more money to be spent on the real terrorist, cancer. Let's talk about cancer. What exactly is cancer? Well, according to the National Cancer Institute, cancer is a group of diseases involving abnormal cell growth with the potential to invade or spread to other parts of the body. What makes cancer so difficult to treat is that it has hyper-evolutionary capabilities making it resistant to drug medications. The other thing about cancer is that it's immortal. That's right, it's immortal. So long as it gets what it needs to survive, it'll continue living. Normal cells have an intracellular program that mediates death. Normal healthy cells are programmed to die. Cancer is not. So you have a hyper-evolving immortal organism taking control of your body and destroying normal cells. What makes it worse is that your own body doesn't recognize it as an enemy and it actually aids the cancer. The cancerous cells grow out of control forming tumors and it asks the body to build blood vessels to the tumors so it can grow even faster. The cancer metastasizes, which basically means that it spreads to other areas of the body. Once it does this, you're pretty much in for a bad ride because all the while you were trying to treat it, it was evolving defenses against those treatments. The best treatment is the total removal of the area affected by the cancer. Wherever this cancer lands, it will wreak havoc. Lands in your eye, you'll go blind. Lands in your lungs, you'll have a real problem breathing. Lands in your liver, your liver is going to fail. Lands in your bones, you'll die an agonizing death as hundreds of tumors will be splitting your bones apart. It will keep spreading until it kills you. But before it kills you, it will make your life a living hell along with your loved ones. It's death in slow motion. If you die instantly, consider yourself lucky. You do not want to die from cancer. Ever heard that reggae song by Cuddy Ranks where he says six million ways to die, choose one? Well, don't choose cancer. Unfortunately, it isn't that easy as it chooses you. One in six of you. Let's talk about brain cancer. It's one of the more rare forms of cancer. Still a lot more common than terrorism. By, by watching the news, you'll never guess that. By listening to the presidential debates, you won't even get a clue. However, if you know anyone that has brain cancer, you'll unfortunately know what exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't want to get spooked, then cover your ears for the next few minutes as I explain to you the brain cancer death process, particularly the glioblastoma death process. Every 45 minutes in the United States, glioblastoma, a form of brain cancer, affects a new family. It destroys them. It first usually starts out with some sort of symptom that doesn't go away. Perhaps a headache, or vomiting, or weakness in one side of the body, or difficulty remembering things, difficulty speaking. These symptoms differ based on where the cancer is located in the brain. The primary tumor. The primary tumor is the first mass of cells discovered. Call it the invader, the un uninvited guest, the hitchhiker, the terminator. That's what they call it in the medical community, the Terminator. There are a lot of names for this beast, and it is a beast, a real beast, a monster, and it will ultimately kill you by its growth. Hi, I'm Jet, and I am 30 years old. I have four boys under eight years of old. I was diagnosed with glioblastoma on 2-27-2015. It will grow and spread. You may get multiple tumors after metastasizes, which will all grow in a confined space, your skull. This will lead to a few possibilities. Either your skull cracks open or your brainstem gets crushed to the point where you have respiratory failure. All the while, your family watches. This will happen in slow motion, taking weeks, months, or years. It's a constant battle, a constant war to control the growth to control the growth of something immortal programmed to grow out of control while your own body conspires to assist it. And everything you throw at it will eventually mutate a defense against it. Now you see why they call it the Terminator? Remember I said the best thing to do is remove the area affected by the cancer? Unfortunately, you don't always get to do that in the brain. The brain is you. You are your brain. And many parts of it are critical. So that's why that's not always an option, unfortunately. 
When it's not an option, then what you have what's called an inoperable tumor. When this happens, you essentially have a ticking time bomb in your head. Even if it's operable, you're still not safe, as they can never fully remove all the cancer cells that lie there in the gray matter. It'll come back, it will spread, and it will eventually kill you. But before that, you'll lose your ability to talk, to walk, remember, and desire to continue to fight. It will kill your mind before it kills your body, all while your family watches in torment, in slow motion. My name is Brett Scott, and I have geoblastoma, and I've been fighting it for roughly eight months, and I pray every day that I can beat this, and I will. If you're young and think only old people get cancer, wrong. Anyone can get cancer. Anyone, including children. There are children out there with brain cancer. A true tragedy. It's wrong on so many levels for a child to have to endure this. For anyone to endure this. We need a breakthrough, a radical shift in what our priorities are. To know who the real enemy is. The real enemy is here among us. Among your friends, among your family. We need to recognize this as a true priority, so it can get its proper proportional funding to victim deaths, awareness, knowledge or perception of a situation or fact. The real enemy is cancer. Do it again. Say hi. Hi. <laughs>